In this morning's Health Watch, new hope for the disabled. Researchers at the University of Pittsburgh wanted to see if paralyzed patients could move robotic limbs using nothing but their minds. And combining mind and machine could pr improve the lives of millions of people. And Jeff Glor is here now with one man's story. Hey, Jeff. Hey, guys. Very inspiring stuff here. His name is Tim Hems. He was part of a clinical trial. It lasted only 30 days. But as you'll see, what was accomplished is giving new hope to spinal cord patients around the world. All right, you can jump up here now. Lifting your child on your lap, a simple move most people take for granted. But for many spinal cord patients, it's something they only dream of. I saw my mom reach down and pick my daughter up, realized I can't do that. Uh, that was very hard for me, knowing that that may never happen again. I had to do whatever it took at the time to do that again. So this month, Tim Hems became the first man ever to control a bionic arm with his mind. Is it Star Trek-like? I don't know, maybe a little bit, but this is something that I did, so it's not a movie, this is reality. Tim always pushed himself to stay active. He played hockey, loved being outdoors, loved riding his motorcycle. But it was a motorcycle accident on July 11, 2004, that left him a quadriplegic. Well, the last thing I was doing before my accident was putting my daughter to bed. I laid her down and um, went out for a bike ride that night. It was a beautiful night. And a deer jumped out in front of me. I was doing about 20 miles an hour. I had a helmet on, and that's basically what saved my life. Alive, but the life he knew was gone. Tim spent months in a nursing home before realizing he needed a way to connect to his family. His daughter, Jaylee, his mother, and his girlfriend, Katie. That led him to an experimental program called Revolutionizing Prosthetics that would allow him to test whether or not brain signals could stimulate movement in a robotic arm. Up until this point, robotic prosthetic arms require muscle contractions to trigger a tiny computer to make the arm function. Now, doctors hope by inserting tiny electrodes in the brain, paralyzed patients will have a new way to do more on their own. During the first few days in the lab, Tim discovered just how tough all of this may be. Trying to move my arm left, I was trying to think left, I was trying to think the word, anything. Left. And um, once we were able to train the computer that that type of signal meant left, it started to go left. You know, the computer was understanding what my brain was telling it. He got to the point where he could, you know, hit 12 out of 16 targets. But that wasn't good enough for him, so we had to keep going. Then, on the second to last day, as seen in this video, Tim was able to reach out and give one of the scientists a high five. All right. There you go. Right. Nice. <laughs> While the first reach was sort of this scientific triumph, <laughs> the second reach had this emotional yeah. component to it. Baby, I want to hold you. <laughs> It was, wait a minute, this is his moment, this is their moment. We're going to be quiet and let this happen. It was something hydraulic and plastic and metal, um, but I put it there. That was very emotional. It was something very personal and something that I'll take with me for the rest of my life because I just reached out and grabbed somebody after seven years. Today, Tim still depends on his loved ones for his basic needs, but he believes that what was accomplished is the first step to gaining back his independence. So, was I ambitious? Hell yeah, I was ambitious. Um, I want to get my life back. I want to, I have a goal. I have an end goal, and this is the first step. Now that Tim has proven this form of brain stimulation can work, the plan is to test additional patients. But just thinking about it, putting electrodes in the brain. It's amazing. I mean, that yeah. whole scientific part is just, is just fascinating and it, and it boggles the mind. But I have to say one of the best parts of that story was when you see that close-up of his face mm -hmm. and he's able to reach out. Yeah. And to, I mean, it's, you could see it in his face how much that meant to him. And when he talks about his parent not being able to... Pick up his child. Which yep. you can't imagine. You can't imagine not being able to hug your child. Yeah. Great ending shot too to see the two of them. Yeah. His daughter. Great, great story. Wish him the best. Thank you, Jeff. Jeff.